Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we will talk about how we would feel if a bourbon we made sold for three times its retail price on the secondary market. My name is Vic Thieu. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Danny Kennard, Kathy Cool, and Lenny Eckstein. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, everybody. Hey, oh, so yeah, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to go through this theoretical thing is what happens if we had a distillery. Now, Lenny has a distillery. I don't think his stuff's selling for three times on secondary yet. It should be, uh, he, you know, he'll be fine about it. We got to wait till Fred Minnick posts about it. Then, uh, and then it'll be, uh, explode. So, uh, we're, as we wait for that, uh, he's just like one of us, but, uh, so we'll be talking all in theory on what do we think happens if, if all of a sudden, uh, it starts selling for big time, uh, on the secondary, but, uh, before we get to that Kathy said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, Kathy? Well, we've we've referenced your old man anger in a couple of shows, sure, and sure. I get that. Um, I suffer from that. Yeah, yeah. I I think I may suffer from it too a little bit. Um, <laughs> not old man anger, but just I don't know if I'm becoming like stodgy or right. it happens or huh? something. But we went to a high end steakhouse, and it's not like an outback or a Texas Roadhouse. This was a high end steakhouse. Um, for dinner. I mean, you know, it's not cheap. It wasn't and Sam's, was it? I'm going there tomorrow. It was Sam's. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we yeah, go. We were down in South County. We went to Sam's. Okay. And um, I saw two people. Now I've gotten past the people wearing jeans. Yeah. Because I understand jeans are just like society, right? Right. right. But I saw two people wearing ball caps. Oh. At the table, having high end steak and. Yeah, I, I was I was judging. I won. I was judging. Hard. Can you not wear any hat, or should I? I'm going there tomorrow night. I would wear my ball cap, but now maybe I have to rethink this. I've got like a, uh, a pork pie hat. Should I wear that? I would take that. Okay. I, I just know. think ball caps are too casual. Like, why do you why do you have to dress up to eat a steak? See, this is this gets into this whole thing where I never want to dress up again. I gave that up with my corporate life. Uh, so I like I, I like places so accepting are you wearing me shorts. Are you going to wear shorts? Well, no, I don't. It's, it's wintertime. So it's okay. going to be like, it's going to be what, like 18 degrees high tomorrow? Oh, yeah, no, tomorrow's going to be cold. Yeah. Um, uh, but I would wear shorts in there uh, in the summertime. Sure. Yeah. But people can't wear pajama pants into Walgreens. Like, where's your line, Steve? Uh, this is, this is why pajama pants it. yeah it's, it's uh, that would be for sleeping so uh, sh- shorts you can wear outside uh they're they're fine when they're in in season i i never think it's uh, appropriate to wear shorts in january yeah, even though i'm a big guy and i'm comfortable like that around the house and uh maybe when i go to the post office at night i go to the post office anything goes uh i go to the post office about 10 o'clock at night uh, to mail you guys your stuff what if you had to stop at Walgreens on the way? Steve? No, I never. I plan that stuff out. I never have an accidental <laughs> Walgreens stop. No, 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 that doesn't happen. So you Kathy. You're voting that I'm stodgy and unreasonable. Not, well, I am, but I, I, that, I don't speak for the group. So we need to go individually and see what everyone else thinks. Uh, uh, is there, is that a problem? Is someone wearing a ball cap and, uh, and jeans at, uh, at a state? I'm fine with the jeans. Okay. How did I you like Sam's anything. by the way? Uh, Cause you, you hadn't gone there before you heard of that from me, right? Sam's. Um, no, actually, Scott found it. Um, you may have talked about it, but I, you know, right back. Yeah, I think, I think, I think he got that from me. I, I told him to go there. I, I, yeah, okay. yeah, no, it was it, good. I had the fillet with lobster claw. Yeah, and um, 
I love Sam's. Green yeah. Manhattan's. So. It's a nice uh, place to treat yourself when you're, you know, it's, it's not, yeah. you're not going to go there every night. It's, uh, it's expensive. But right. It's, it's good. It it's good to go to every once in a while. So yeah. We, yeah. You know. oh, I'm a big Sam's Steakhouse guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, McNew. What, uh, what did, what are your thoughts on this? Mm-hmm. Jeans and a hat. Is that, is that on Jeans are okay. It's, nice, it's je- nice. Let me say nice jeans. Nice jeans are okay, right? Okay. You're not where you're like, okay. she's okay with the jeans. Then it just comes down to the hat. Can you wear a ball cap? Uh, the hat wouldn't state? actually offend me. Like it wouldn't make sense to me in that setting. Um, if it's like a normal Saturday night or something, I'm just like, you can't take off a hat for like an hour to have a nice dinner. I got bad nice hair. Things. I got bad hair. I got hat head. You I got know, a, I, once I you commit to the hat, you're stuck. Me, you're stuck. Um, some, yeah. some, some, some restaurants in Indianapolis actually, um, kind of, they won't call it a dress code, but they will ask you to remove it. Some of the downtown ones will, and some of them in Carmel will, they'll ask you to not wear that in their restaurant. <laughs> right. Right. Are and they I also handing go, you a jacket and a tie if you're uh, not terrible. wearing it? No, but I, I just think like, why would you be like, Hey, I know this is an upscale place. Why would you purposely go to look out of place? Like, I think no, know, know your audience sort of. Uh, I don't I mean, know. Maybe it's a girl thing. Maybe I, I, I don't feel like just because I got white tablecloths means you have to wear. Now, if there was jacket required, I would, I would respect that. I wouldn't go there, but I would be like, okay, well, that's just a restaurant I can't go to. And, and, uh, but they're, they're not. That and I think that's restaurant. fine too, but I just but, think it's like a know your audience. Like, do you really want to be wearing it? Sam's is, jacket? is the, uh, you know, the dinner crowd at Sam's is, you know, like four, four to four to five thirty. It's, it's incredibly crowded. Then it dies down after that. it's old people. It's a lot of old people. At Sam's. I love blue hair yeah. dinner. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, blue they're hair dinner, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but like bourbon's bistro is a white tablecloth place. I, I go in there in shorts, uh, hats, all yeah, the, but they feel uh, casual. Really think of it, yeah. I think of bourbon's bistro more as a, a ball cap kind of place. Yeah. Was, what's the difference? It has white tablecloths, fancy food, uh, 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 waiters and waitresses that have to dress up like, you know, like wear a white shirt and a tie, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, it's uh, that kind of, that kind of look. So it's not like it's a, uh, a dump. It's not like, you know, the, no. you know, got somebody in shorty shorts and, uh, uh, you know, a t-shirt waiting on you. It's a, it's a professional kind of upscale. I guess I feel. need to go to bourbon's bistro more. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll change my mind. And when you walk in with the ball cap, I'll scoff at you. Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't be mad at seeing another person in one, but I would tell my husband to leave it in the car okay. sort of situation. Yeah. All right. Uh, hmm. Interesting. It's what are your thoughts, Lenny? Can, can you go into a, a steakhouse, white tablecloth type of place uh, and, and wear a ball cap? I, I, th- I think that Colorado gets a pass because it's kind of a more casual mm-hmm. state in general um culturally but even if it didn't I, here's my opinion and maybe it's my opinion because i like it um you know uh, a ball cap is like acceptable attire these days and steve i think you made a good point like most men you put on a hat and it's you can take it off but you like just got out of bed at that point <laughs> <laughs> what's worse the hat yeah, or the, the hat head I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just, I mean, it's how it is. And, uh, yeah. I think like Danny, like, take out, take off your hat right now. Let's see what this looks like. So imagine Danny, uh, his wife t- t- comes into Sam's and really? be like, Danny, get that hat. Everyone can see it. You Danny. take it's your hat off too. Yeah. It's harassment. I got, I got, I got, uh, I got the headphones on. I can't, I can't <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Danny. Oh, imagine that. Imagine that at the table. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Kathy. That's what you want. There you go. <laughs> all right. Vote Not me bad. down. That's all right. I'll just be my stodgy old lady. No, let me go back to you guys. Because sometimes my husband husband gets mad because I'll meet him after work somewhere and he's like, Why are you dressed up? You're wearing a dress. And it's like a really casual dress, but he's like still in his work clothes. And like you don't want to match the person you're with, sort of situation. Like you want to be casual in a hat, like while she's dressed up. Like, do you yeah. want that? I do. Or do you yeah. that? Yeah. look like you go together. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had to deal with McNew when she's been dressed up before. And we've had, we walked for over two miles on cobblestone. <laughs> I fall on the sidewalk a lot. But. She falls down. And then, then when she gets there, after walking in these shoes, when she gets to the place, she's like, my feet are sore. I'm putting my tennis shoes on now. Why didn't you put them on when we were walking on the cobblestone? And then wear the fancy shoes when you're there. Not McNew. She wears the damn things the whole way there. <laughs> And then as soon as she gets in, she sits on a chair and changes into the tennis shoes because, yeah, 
That's the logic. Logic. <laughs> yeah. uh, last one I want to have weigh in on this. I'm very interested to see, Danny, what do you think? Could you go into a place like a Sam Steakhouse in a hat, or do you think you need to be respectful of the fact it's uh, upscale dining and not wear uh, a hat? Well, to tell you the truth, I would actually carry, if I was planning on going to a place like that, Yeah, and I always try to find out what, if, if I have to dress up or not. Yeah. If I have to dress up, as in dressing up, tie, and everything else, I ain't going to the place. Well, it's not a tie place. It's definitely not a tie <laughs> place. Not going. <laughs> so so right. but it's not a tie place, going. but it's but just the hat. I was, I was raised to at least carry a hairbrush in the car. Okay. Take your hat off. You think you could fix hair. that hair you got right now just with a brush? Yep. I don't think so. I, I oh, think I, I think you're done. I think you got I think there's a shower involved. There's a blow dryer and about 45 minutes. I think you mean brush or comb? <laughs> <laughs> he's got Probably a brush. Both. Like yeah. the round brush. They like. Yeah. That's, he's yeah. got one of those. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Well, I don't think we resolved anything, but it just shows you that. Uh, yeah. There's how other people. Think. I, I, it's going to make me change tomorrow. On my birthday, even though, uh, you know, people should be happy that I'm even there on my birthday, but that's fine. I'm going to wear my pork pie hat. Uh, that's my, uh, that's my, uh, you know, my bourbon baron hat that I wear. So I'm going to wear that. I'm not going to wear my ABV network. You are going to look so nice. Oh yeah. I'm going to send Kathy a photo of it. Yeah. Just think of it as a gift to Kathy. Her birthday was two days ago. It's a yeah, gift that's, to her. That's what I'm getting you this year for your birthday, Kathy. A picture of me at Sam's in a pork pie hat. <laughs> <laughs> we both went to Sam's for our birthday. There you go. There you go. All right. Guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Lenny, starting this thing off. Lenny, what do you got? I'm drinking some uh, Talnua, uh, Colorado made American single pot steel Irish style whiskey. Okay. <laughs> no. No, there was weird sound going on there. And it was like feedback or something. I don't even know what that was. So, uh, Danny, you're next. We'll give Lenny the lead, but I, I, I would have a hard time awarding him victory with that. So, hopefully, you can be. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, I'm going to try this Stellum single barrel rye. Okay. Ooh, I'm Very having a hard nice. time finding that. Yeah, that's gotten popular. Yeah. Uh, we found this. We're at. It was in Kansas. Kansas, okay. So get in the car tomorrow and go to Kansas, Kathy. I got to go to Stumpy's tomorrow. Okay, true. Okay, there's our lead. That was crisp, very crisp. I've got uh, Hard Truth Sweet Mash Rye. I like this one. This is a, this is a good one. Too. It's very good. Yeah. Cork pop. Ooh, that was good. Oh, closest can be. Danny's Kathy, ahead. who's got the lead? Dan, okay. Danny's yeah. ahead. Yours is a little to... basic. I, we have to live with it. When you ask a judge, you got to go with the judge. So, Kathy, you're next. Now you got to beat Danny. Well, I don't think I will. I've got a screw top on a bottled and bomb JW Dant. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you're winning that oh, one. All right. Danny has the lead. Uh, McDoom, you're last but not least. Yeah, I don't think Chris is doing much. I have some Old Hamer castor rye that's going to wash That's okay. about gone. Yeah. I can't even open it. <laughs> Danny just gets it. It won't even pop up. Right <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with this. <laughs> huh. like, I don't know. It's like, I haven't opened this in like a year or so. It's just a uh, Danny. Okay. Good job. <laughs> there you go. Danny, Danny wins. Cheers to Danny. <laughs> Cork pop champ again. Cheers. I, I don't think Danny's won it since he won the time where he was able to get the shirt. I, I think. Right. I, yeah. I think that's the last time he won. So mm -hmm. cheers. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Cheers, Danny. Oh, All right, okay. we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to have the scenario that we're going to discuss. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. 
This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is also Freddie Mills going underneath the alias of Danny Kennard. You can find me on Facebook at any time. Just look up Danny Kennard, but I am Freddie Mills. Trust me. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we are discussing how you would feel if your bourbon sold for three times the retail value. Yes. So say, uh, you know, in our scenario here, we have a bourbon that we retail for about 50 bucks. And all of a sudden we discover on the secondary, it's selling. And not just one person listed, because anything could happen. You know, you could have a friend to be like, hey, I've got, uh, I've got Steve's bourbon here and it's 150, uh, you know, and the, the, the guy's just trying to pump up my ego. And the, but, but let's talk about a bourbon that's actually selling for three times that. So you got people coming in saying, can I get that? And then you kind of watch them and then you go to the Facebook account that is uh, selling this on the secondary and you realize that person's coming in and buying it for 50 and they're selling it for 150. What's your reaction to that? Are you, are you happy about that? Uh, because now you're selling, you know, all that you can uh, make uh, at the, the, your $50 retail. Are you mad about that? Are you going to try to address that and get them to stop? Are you going to raise your price and, and try to get some of that money yourself? What, what's your reaction if, if, if you owned a distillery and that started happening? We'll save Lenny for last because he actually has a distillery. For us, it's just kind of postulating what we would do, uh, just kind of not a realistic scenario. So we'll, we'll have Lenny go very last on this one. Kathy, what would you do? if? if um, I think it would make me a little sour. I think mm -hmm. I'd get a little... I get a little uh, salty over that. Um, and if people are coming in and, and buying it for me, maybe I make them crack the bottle right there. Okay. Like, oh yeah, you can totally have this. Let's have the first pour together. That way they can't sell it on the secondary. Yeah. Kathy's lit by the end of each night because she's got everybody <laughs> giving her a pour anytime you buy a bottle. <laughs> Kathy becomes a, an alcoholic, so yeah, yeah. But uh, but she's she curtails that situation, so that's good. All right, all right. What what do you think, uh, Mr. Danny? Would you would you be happy about that, or would you be mad? I would not be very happy to actually tell you the truth, because yes, on one hand, I understand uh, people are out. There, it's a uh, it means you're popular. It's yeah. a free world. You can turn around and do whatever you want to do. You can make money any which way you want to do. But yeah, I, I feel, sucks. Danny, I, I, I like what you're saying because I, I kind of feel the same way. I, I feel like initially there'd be the, this kind of ego pump and be like, oh, cool. That's that's freaking awesome. They, you know, people like my stuff enough. They're willing to pay three times. I think initially the reaction would be that's pretty awesome. But I think that would quickly go away when you exactly. realize people are coming in and buying it from you for 50 bucks. So if, if Danny's the guy, the flipper, I'm selling my bourbon for 50 bucks. He comes into my gift shop and, uh, and then I see Danny going and then he, I, I'm making uh, 50 minus taxes and all that of the cost of production and all that. So I'm making, you know, I don't know, not much at the end of the day when you, when you, the labor, you know, I've got to pay people who are in the gift shop to sell it. And then Danny comes in uh, and buys that bourbon and he makes a hundred dollars profit and he doesn't pay any taxes on it or anything like that more than likely because those flippers don't tend to do that. And then also I'm, I'm getting angry. Then also I don't like Danny. I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm mad at him. I think it would, it would, would what would happen to me. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, initially, I initially it'd be just kind of cool to see that. Yeah, they like it that much, and then I'd start figuring out how do I, how do I make that money? Then I got to, I got to up, I got to, right. yeah, yeah. McDo, what about you? Do you think you'd do the same thing? 
So I think I'm going to be mad that I didn't think about it. Like, I'm going to be so excited that I made something that people are this excited about, but I'm going to be pissed. I didn't charge enough for it. So mm-hmm. the next year, I think, you know, I'm going to let it slide. Like people are going to do what they're going to do. There's not much. You so can you're going to build it. the base. Yeah. You're going to build the yeah. enthusiasm. So it's already yeah. out there. So the next year I'm going to come out with like a, probably like a limited run and put some snarky label on it, like a okay. turtle upside down, like it's flipped on its shell and give it some stupid name and charge $3,000 for it. Like I'm, yeah. I'm going to play the game. Why not you're play the game? Okay. But very, a very limited. That's, that's a business. smart business move. You sell it for $50. And then someone's selling for one fifty, and now you think you could sell it for three thousand. Yeah, you, you'll you'll do fine in this business. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though. That's like, good, if yeah. they can do it, why wouldn't uh, I do it? And it's yeah. kind of, you know, what I like I mean? the turtle upside down, though. I like that. Yeah. Well, uh, I saw you had a video of turtles today. Are you going to get a bunch of those turtles? You said you like. No, those. they were real cute though, but I think like, they smell weird, so I don't want them in my house. <laughs> 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 They're turtles. cute though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. They um, might think you smell weird. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's <laughs> fair. And they that's would fair. probably prefer to live where they're living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Lenny, uh, the the person who actually owns a distillery, and what what would happen if uh, you know the same scenario we've lined out here? Your bourbon sells for you know, I don't know, approximately fifty bucks, somewhere in there, that range. We'll say fifty ish. And if you found uh, that there was an active secondary, not just one person listing that it hasn't even sold, but an active secondary where people are buying it for one fifty. Um, would this anger you or what would you be, what would be your reaction? Well, I mean, I guess just to get to the point, the short answer is no, uh, mm-hmm. it, it wouldn't. And, and, but here's why, and this is maybe a little bit of a different look on this. Um, if it's selling on the secondary market for more than retail, that means it's hard to get a retail. And that means right. retail has sold. Um, I think, um, you know, it would take a lot for that and, yeah. So, so that, but, but I guess like to make news point, if everything is selling at retail, which creates a demand on the secondary for which it's selling it significantly more. I mean, I do feel like uh, any brand needs to take note and that should kind of pave the way for some ultra premium bottlings and for sure. Don't just jack up the price. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right. Because, you know, Buffalo Trace, they're one to watch, and they're certainly, you know, all their right. products are, are super allocated, selling for more. But that doesn't mean they just jack up the price across the board. As a matter of fact, they tend to keep kind of the same pricing. But like you said, then they start doing special bottlings and stuff like that. And, and maybe that's the that's where you're making money. Oh, like, I like certainly the think yeah. there's room for, like, the Buffalo Traces out there. And Yeah. They, you know, now that we got the, the Deer Hammer Antique Collection. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> it, it, it's a you know barrel strength versions and all this kind of stuff aged a little bit longer. Well, here's uh, yeah. another. So, so Lenny, would you crank try and crank up your production more so that you could put more out on the retail? I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not a good one to answer that because our model is because he's lazy. He's lazy. Yes, exa- spot on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we're a different model. You know, we're not a big production brand. We're a, we're a craft distillery through and through, and part of that is. You know, we fill one barrel a day. That's that's what we do. That's our thing. And you know, I've got uh, other stuff to, to worry about. Like, uh, you know, I don't know what. I, I I'll let you know when I figure it out. But uh, here's another angle on all of this. Um, I've been kind of this is super dorky, but I've been paying a lot of attention to the whole NFT thing. You guys know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And and a lot of people don't quite get it, and I, I understand why. I don't quite get it, but I'm trying to get my head around a little bit more. I don't but quite I'm, get it either. I mean, I know what it is. I don't understand. I would never invest in that myself, but I, I, I know people do. But you can sell some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are a company that, that could sell that sort of stuff. I'll be selling photos of McNew, uh, you know, podcasting and stuff like that. Be, <laughs> exactly. I mean, like screenshot of what's yeah. happening right now. Right. Yeah. That's right there. It's NFT. Yeah. It's but but I yeah. But more to my point, I mean, like, and that's a whole nother discussion. Don't you think the most valuable NFT in uh, ABV network history is Danny on that cat litter box? hundred percent. Yes. Oh yeah. That that's the one. If that goes to auction, that's, that's. That NFT drops that's this week. That's I'm in. Well over retirement money. That's yeah, yeah, that's Misty's <laughs> retirement. Day. Here he's got a spreadsheet of his whiskey. Uh, Misty's is just the picture of Danny. If Misty gives you that picture, she has to get a cut of the profit. <laughs> For sure. That will be in a contract. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, 
the no, reason no. I bring that up, though, is like, you know, if one is to have any kind of frustration or angst over what happens in the secondary market, and I certainly do, like, I, w- I don't like the secondary market at all. I'd love to see it go away. Like, I could see reasonable trades, and you can't orchestrate what one thinks is reasonable. But I hate that something that might sell for border- around $200 retail goes for two to $5,000 on secondary. Right. Right. And I do. I don't know why, but like I could see that if it was like per bottle uh, tied to an NFT and allows trading in that capacity. <laughs> hey, let the free market do its thing. And, you know, I, I can I can be more on board with that. You know, maybe maybe it's a painterly rendition of each bottle. And that's, you know, and you get the artwork and you get the bottle and I don't know. There, maybe there's something there. But I, I God, man, I I kind of hate the secondary market. I don't I don't love it. I just like the fact that it if something goes in the secondary market now that means it was a huge success in retail and that's nice for any producer yeah okay well there you go there's uh there's what we would do in that situation and yeah we we kind of all were on the same page there's some fl- there is some flattery there certainly uh but also there's also a strategy then how do you start making some of that money i think is is the bottom line so we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us kathy we'll start with you where can people find you i am kathy cool on facebook all right danny you can find me at danny canard on Lenny. facebook you can find uh, myself and the rest of Deer Hammer on social media at Deer Hammer on the webs at DeerHammer.com. You can also buy Deer Hammer products there, ship directly to their door, and you can come visit us in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado, where I'll be scheming my next NFT drop. <laughs> <laughs> McNew. But can we find him on the secondary market? Yeah, soon. 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 Any day now. Yeah. McNew? I am on Instagram at McNew ABV. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, that thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen, or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.